In this video, we will take a look at how to mesh the spur gears with one another. So let's take a look at the parameters for the two spur gears that we want to create the mate. Obviously the diametral pitch for both these gears should be identical and let's keep it at 24. From the part one of this module, we can refer back to the definition of uh, diametral pitch, which is equal to the number of teeth on a gear divided by its pitch circle diameter. The number of teeth for the gear 1 will be 30 and for gear 2 will be 60. Rest all other parameters for both of these gears. Let's keep it same including the pressure angle which is at 20 degrees face width half inch. Let's create a hub on one side with the 1 inch diameter Let's make it an overall length of one inch diameter that includes the face width. So if the face width is half inch and the overall length is one inch, it means the width of the hub is also equal to half inch. Because the overall length includes the face width plus the width of the hub. And let's keep the nominal shaft diameter at half inch. Let's not worry about the key width for now. And let's take a look at the calculations for uh, the center distance of a plate. Let us say that we want to mount these two gears on a plate uh, using a shaft that is half inch diameter. And let's use the plate with six by five uh, dimensions. And the plate has had 0.25 inch thickness. Remember we are using the inch spur gear. So all the dimensions needs to be in inches and that is the reason why we are using the term diametral pitch otherwise for metric gears we will be using the term the module now let's calculate the center distance between the two gears that needs to be calculated so that we can have a perfect mesh for the gears so if p equal to 24 the diametral pitch is equal to 24 for both gears and the first gear has 30 and the second gear has 60 teeth that means the pitch circle diameter for the first gear is equal to n over p which is equal to 30 over 24. So the number of teeth divided by the diametral pitch will give you the pitch circle diameter. Okay, so that's the d1 that's 30 over 24. And similarly the pitch circle diameter for the second gear is calculated to be 60 over 24 in order to keep the pitch constant we have to make sure that the d1 and d2 are calculated accurately based on their number of teeth and so finally we can calculate the center distance between the two uh, gears equal to diameter of the first gear plus diameter of the second gear divided by 2 and that will give us the center distance. So in this case, if we plug in these numbers here, we get the center distance that is equal to 1.875 inches. And that is the distance we're gonna be using to create these two holes on the plate that have half inch diameter where we're gonna insert the two shafts. And then on those two shafts, we're gonna uh, mount these two gears and then look at the mechanical mate for the gear assembly. Okay, so fast forward based on these dimensions and these calculations, the plate to mount these gears is built and then we're gonna start the assembly on this plate as a reference. So I'm gonna to go to file, make assembly from this part and insert that as the first component in the gear assembly. This part is obviously the fixed one as indicated by this letter F in parenthesis. Now I will also create two shafts. So let's go to file new part and in the front plane make sure that the unit system is inches. Uh, we can create a shaft that is half inch diameter 
and let's extrude it by one inch. So we can save this part as the shaft. And then let's go back to the assembly where we're going to insert these two shafts. So let's insert components shaft, holding down the control key and then dragging it to create another copy of it. And so now I'm going to use the made option first to align the axis for this shaft. Same thing with the other shaft as well. Click OK. And then I'm going to align their back faces also to finish this part of the assembly. All right. Just to double check the center distance that we've calculated is exactly what we want it to be. So let's go to evaluate, measure, and if I click on these two circles, I see that the center distance is equal to 1.875 inches as we've calculated. So once the shafts are mounted on this plate, now we can start creating the uh, gears. So I'm gonna go to design library. Let's go to toolbox, add in now. I'm gonna start off with the ANSI inch, power transmission, gears. Then I'm going to right click on the spur gear to create part. In the create part option, we can input these parameters as we had uh, selected in the beginning. So diametral pitch is 24, 30 number of teeth, 20 pressure angle, half inch face width, hub is on the one side with one inch diameter with the overall length of one inch. That overall length includes from the front face of this gear to the back face of this hub. So that is the overall length. So half inch is the face width of the gear tooth and then half inch is the width of the hub. Hub diameter is one inch and the shaft diameter is half inch. Let's not use any keyways here and then I'm gonna click on the check mark to finish making that gear. So I'm going to go back to that gear one more time. Make sure everything is all right. We're going to come back again to create a hole here so that we can insert the set screw in it. Now let's make another gear. So I'm going to go back to design library. I'm going to right click on the spur gear, create part, the only change this time that will be done is to change the number of teeth, which is equal to 60. Rest everything is the same. So keeping the diametral pitch 24 constant, we are maintaining the same distance between the two consecutive teeth. And that is the reason why the pitch circle diameter had to increase in order to make sure that all 60 teeth can be accommodated by keeping the pitch, diametral pitch equal to 24. Let's click OK on the check mark to finish this second gear. And I'm going to save this gear, the 30 inch, and I'm going to put it on a location. Also, I'm going to go to the second gear and save that gear as well. Remember the names of the files of these gears as we create are self-explanatory. For example, it says spur gear 24 dp, which means 24 diametral pitch, 30 teeth, 20 pressure angle, half inch face width, and same description for the other gear. So just by looking at the file size, you can tell what kind of a gear that you have created. I'm going to go back to the assembly and insert components. 
I'm going to bring this gear. Also, let's bring the other gear that we want to mesh with. And by approximately aligning it next to the shafts, let's complete first the standard mate assembly. So I'm going to go to mate, click on the shaft and click on this uh, gear and the shaft to align their axis for both of these. And let's complete that. Let's say we want to keep the offset distance between the uh, face of this plate and the back face of that hub uh, by some distance. So let's first select that face of the plate and the back face of the hub. And then I'm going to use the distance and input the value here, let's say 0.25 inches. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other gear as well. So I'm going to select this face. And using the distance of 0.25 inch, I'm going to complete that standard mate. I'm going to align the part at, with respect to the front plane. And now I can see the two gears are assembled and I can drag using the cursor and make sure that the gears gears are rotating with respect to their axis on which they are mounted on the shaft but right now they seem to be interfering with one another so the gear mate is where it's what it's required right now before we start off with the gear mate let's zoom in and try to position the gear teeth with respect to one another so that they are not interfering with each other. So again, this is just uh, from the visualization point of view that once the gear mesh is done, uh, it should not look as an interfering gear. So once we've done with this approximate alignment of these two gears, let's go to mate one more time scroll down and find the mechanical mates option and then click on the gear. It's very important to input the ratio. It depends on what is your input gear and what is your output gear or in other words what is the driving gear and the driven gear. So the driving gear number should be on the left side and the driven gears number should be on the right side. So we know that the number of teeth here are 30 and for the uh, other gear it's 60 which means the pitch circle diameter of this gear is half of the pitch circle diameter of the other gear uh, because the diametral pitch is constant. So either we can put in the ratio of 1 to 2 or we can put in the numbers as 30 to 60 or 1 to 2 it really doesn't matter since it's just a ratio. But before we are able to do that we need to do the selections. So under the selections, I'm going to select the bore of inch spur gear as my driving gear. And also then I'm going to select the bore of inch spur gear as the driven gear. Then come down here and either input 30 to 60 or simply put 1 to 2. To complete the definition of the gear ratio. So what it means is that if the pinion is rotating at 100 rpm then this other spur gear which is the driven gear will be rotating at half of that speed which is 50 rpm. Click on the check mark one more time and now the gear assembly should be complete. We can verify that by rotating these two gears with respect to one another and if we are trying to rotate the pinion in the clockwise direction then the other spur gear that is meshed with should be turning in the counterclockwise direction. If it is not doing it then you need to go back and check the mate 
one more time for the mechanical mates. So that is how we can do the uh, spur gear uh, meshing with respect to one another. The only thing that we need to make sure is the ratio that is defined accurately. The other thing about the modification of the parameters for the meshing of the spur gears is that uh, let's say we wanted to change some of the parameters of these gear, gears. So if I right click on the uh, the uh, smaller spur gear and if I say you can either uh, right click on this gear in the uh, you know history here or in the uh, property manager where we can find the edit tool components or we should be able to right click here on the gear itself and find the option that says edit tool comp toolbox components so once I click on it, again, it will bring back to the same window and then we can change the parameters here and configure this gear with, uh, uh, you know, some other name and then we can assign the part number or something like that. So that is how we can, again, bring back that toolbox and uh, change the toolbox options. Now, the other thing is that if we want to create a hole on the hub, so that we can, then we can insert the set screw to prevent the relative motion between the shaft and the hub of this gear so that the gear will not be slipping uh, you know during the rotational motion so we need to create a hub on this and we need to use the um, hole wizard to drill a hole but before we do that we need to create a plane on the uh, this cylindrical face and then we can use the hole wizard to create the hole on this hub so that the set screw can be um, inserted in it. So let's go to the uh, reference geometry, click on the plane and I'm going to click on the cylindrical face of the gear on which I want to create the hub. So expand the feature manager and look for which gear in that list that has been highlighted for it which is this one and if I click on the plane one and then click OK so I can create this plane that is tangent to the cylindrical face so on this plane I'm gonna create the whole wizard now so first I've aligned it normal to the viewpoint and then I can go to assembly features click on the whole wizard click on the straight tap option change it to ANSI standard ANSI inch let's select the size hash 1024 for the set screw let's use the um, end condition as blind and let's key accept the default depth of 0.38 inch and then go to the positions tab and then with reference to this origin here I'm going to place the hole there and of course with the smart dimensions we can adjust this distance and then click on the check mark to create that threaded hole we can always go to the options then go to document properties detailing and click on the shaded cosmetic threads to see the threads as visible for the threaded hole and so that is how we can create the threaded hole on the hub of the gear so that the set screw can be inserted in it so that is how we can do the spur gear assembly Thanks for watching and in the next video we will look at the assembly of rack and pinion as well as the meter gear.